Silver Screen Action Figure Podcast. This is your host, Andre Joseph of AJFX Productions, and we're doing a special question and answer segment uh, since we've already three episodes in, and this is a good way to kind of like break things up a little bit and basically answer some questions from our fans. Uh, to be quite honest, you know, we put this out uh, a couple of days ago to see if anybody was interested in asking us questions about the podcast and our own views on different toy lines, what toy lines we're going to cover next. Um, we're still starting out, so without any fluff, we didn't get any questions. Um, no surprise there, but like I said, we're still in our humble beginnings. It takes time to build an audience and find that niche uh, to see what works, what doesn't work. So it's always a learning process. But we're having fun doing this, and you know, me and the guys have really had a ball uh, reminiscing about our childhood memories and discussing the different toy lines and the films that they were based on, even the cartoons or television adaptations that they also came about. Um, so... Let's get to it. So, I mean, even though we don't have any questions that were submitted, we do have, however, you know, just from conversations I've had from people who've given me feedback about the podcast, um, you know, they, they've asked some questions or raised some concerns. So we're going to try to address some of those things and also even questions that might pop up at a certain point. Might as well cover them right now. Um, if we ever do build like a huge following for this. First question that comes about, isn't an issue to have our discussions be about toys based on cartoon adaptations of films? So this was brought up when we did Ghostbusters because the Ghostbusters toy line that we all grew up with in the 1980s was based on the real Ghostbusters cartoon. And as I mentioned in that episode, um, I watched the cartoon and I was a big fan of the cartoon before I ever saw the original 84 film with Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd. So it was already kind of like a quite a shock to the system as a kid to find out that the movie came before the cartoon. And then the cartoon sort of had its own influence on the sequel Ghostbusters 2. But I think Craig pretty much um, was able to sort of clarify the fact that had it not been for the film, we wouldn't have the cartoon. And had it not been for the cartoon, we wouldn't have had the toy line. Um, and the bottom line is, yeah, so, you know, we're talking primarily about a toy line based on an animated series. But still, the same of Marshmallow Man was dead on accurate to the film. Slimer, yeah, they changed the design from the movie, but it's still green and it's still slimy. And the firehouse still has some resemblance to the real hook and ladder firehouse that's in Manhattan. Um, so, you know, it's, it is what it is. And the fact is, is that, you know, there's going to be a number of episodes like this where there's toys that have sort of a hybrid between the movie and the animated series. Or it's strictly on the animated series the character designs may be closer to the likeness of the original actors from the live action movie. Um, and not to mention, like in the case of Transformers, you had an animated Transformers movie in 1986. We weren't going to let that be completely bypassed just so we could only talk about the Michael Bay movies. So the fact of the matter is when we talk about silver screen, you know, we're definitely talking about what's been in the theaters, but what generally was made specifically as a 90 minute to a two hour, even a three hour uh, motion picture, you know, whatever you consider to be epic, we're going to talk about it. And every now and then we may stray away into the animated shows or any other adaptation you know we're going to do ninja turtles at a certain point and obviously there was only a few movie related turtles toys in the original run before mecca now decided to go about and make dead on accurate figures based on the movies but we're still gonna talk about those and yeah you know it can't help but to address 
the toys we grew up with based on the animated show. Um, so that's just sort of like the way that I would say we would handle it. If it's not for those movies, we wouldn't have the cartoon. If we didn't have the cartoon, we would not have the toy line. Question number two, will Legos and Funko Pops get covered in a future episode? Yes. Um, so we do have some people that listen to our show who are a little bit younger, so please excuse the foul language every now and then. Um, and I know some of these in particular who do collect Legos, they do collect the Funko Pops. Um, I could definitely speak a lot about Legos because I grew up with them but my cousin more so, and I'm hoping to get him on the show at some point and uh, maybe discuss this or one of the other toy lines that we used to pick up. And, um, you know, Legos have obviously become far more popular today than they were back in the 80s. And just the way that they've been able to take a number of movies now, you know, between the Marvel properties, DC, um, even Ghostbusters and Star Wars... It's really incredible how it's evolved and how amazingly appealing uh, Legos have become. So I, I think you can't go without talking about the impact that they've had in capturing the movies we grew up with. And the same thing goes with the Funko Pops. Now, I'm not a huge pop collector. The only one that I have in my possession is an Audrey 2 pop for Little Shop of Horrors because that was one of the toys I always wanted as a kid. The closest thing I had to that was one of those um, Milton Bradley uh, Feed Me Trap uh, games. And it had like a like a Venus flytrap similar to the Audrey 2 from that film. So that was like as close as I could get. But having like a dead-on accurate looking Audrey 2, I needed that. And... Um, one thing I want to also say, too, is that if Funko Pop ever made a Johnny Five from Short Circuit, that's another pickup for me. Um, but I'm not one that's going to be like some collectors who collect so many of them, they have a huge wall. But I do admire those guys, and I know some of them. So um, we, we definitely will be discussing that, because I think that's been a phenomenon in itself. Um, and a few other things, like the, the Kubrick's line, um, everything that Diamond Toys and Hot Toys are putting out... Um, no topic is ever off limits here. So a lot of the stuff we're going to definitely be talking about uh, in future episodes and probably even reference them in some of the topics that we're going to do soon. Uh, third question, what are your thoughts on the Super 7 Reaction Series? So when I first heard about this, um, for those of you who do not know, so the Super 7 Reaction Series uh, originally began with the original 1979 Alien movie. Uh, legend has it, and actually it's true, when we say it's a legend, um, Kenner, at the height of their success with the Star Wars figures, wanted to do figures based on Alien. Both movies are made by 20th Century Fox, and they're both space films, so it seemed like naturally that would be something worth making. Uh, a few prototypes were produced. There was a Ripley. There was an Ash. Um, and one of the other characters I'm trying to remember. Um, Ripley and Ash were the two. And of course there was like a, a xenophobe alien figure. A xenomorph alien. So the, they were produced in the same likeness and the same size as the Star Wars figures. Um, and there was a 12 inch doll which did get released now because alien was r-rated and more of a horror sci-fi thriller than you know a space fantasy like star wars these figures never came out because they were too the movie itself was too scary for kids um so we've only seen pictures of it for the longest time until finally um super seven decided they were going to take those prototypes and they were going to make those toys for real and not only did they do that, but they expanded upon it over time and started making figures of the other characters from the movie. They made a play set. They made even a few vehicles and then eventually expanded into some of the other Alien movies. Um, and soon enough, they would expand into other films of that period in that same mold and likeness and size as the Star Wars figures. So we got Back to the Future, we got the Goonies, we got Escape from New York, we have um, Jaws. Uh, so 
I was super hyped when I heard about this. And as soon as the Back to the Future toys came out, I had to pick those up right away. Back to the Future was one of those movies I always wanted a toy line for, and we never got. Naturally, because the first film wasn't expected to be this big phenomenon. And as you remember, it was a tough movie to get sold because of the whole subplot with Marty McFly going back to 1955 and his mother as a teenager uh, falling in love with him by accident. So having to like try to get his parents together wasn't so Disney friendly and Disney turned it down on those merits. And obviously once Zemeckis had six hours of romancing the stone, Universal greenlit Back to the Future, and he was able to make a movie that, even for Spielberg standards, was tame enough that everybody can enjoy it. Um, but the sequels would have had a lot more appeal. There would be lots of DeLorean toys, but never figures of Marty and Doc. The closest things that we ever got were those um, McDonald toys, uh, the Happy Meal toys based on the Back to the Future cartoon which were good to have, but not satisfactory enough. I wanted a Michael J. Fox figure that I could play with and have him travel through any time in the world. And finally now, you know, 30 some odd years after the fact, we finally get those toys. Um, it, it did get a little absurd with certain movies that they started making figures for. When they started doing toys for Breaking Bad and... Even recently, well, years ago when they did Tomorrowland, the, the George Clooney movie, I thought maybe they were going a little too far with it. And the brand definitely overexposed itself where they had to pull back. So now they're still doing movie licensed toys. They have a RoboCop and a They Live um, set coming out, which I definitely want to pick up. Um, but they're also going to be doing, as you see, a lot more... Um, classic toy lines in the Star Wars mold. So there will be a Transformers Super 7 series, uh, He-Man. There's also a Street Fighter one coming out. So there, there's going to be... Uh, I think they're going to be more exclusive because for a while, you could get them in Toys R Us. You could get them in Target and Walmart. So I think now they're going to be more online exclusives. They're going to be more selective with the licenses that they do. As I said before, they're going to be making more of the... Um, alien figures not just from the 79 film but also from the james cameron 1986 movie aliens so a lot of things to be excited about i know charlie's a big collector of those he's looking forward to the transformers figures we've been talking about that so um there's gonna be a few that i'm gonna be picking up that's all i could say about that question number four what is your most sought after toy so the most sought after toys um there's quite a few but I'll just say like a handful just off the top of my head. Most of them are actually prototypes for toys that we never got. But if you go on eBay every now and then, they do pop up. And I know if I could get a hold of some of those figures, even if they're not painted, I would be happy to paint them myself or even get a 3D printer just to make them for myself. So that being said, I would say, and this may go beyond just movie-related toys, but there are a number of WWF action figures that were supposed to be produced uh, back in 94 that were not released. Uh, they were called the Orange Card set. So they were um, basically the last line of figures that apparently were only going to be released in the UK. And, you know, because of a license change, because of sales dropping off, um, those figures were never made uh, for mass distribution. But over the years, thanks to the likes of Zack Ryder and others, um, we've seen these prototypes pop up, at least some heads and some unpainted molds. And uh, those are definitely figures, like, if I could find them, I would love to have them. Or if I could even just get customs, I'll feel like I'm as close to them as I could get. It would be wonderful if Mattel could make those toys, but uh, get the right letters to them. <laughs> and um, the other is actually from... The 1983 miniseries V. Uh, that was the one... A lot of people probably wouldn't even remember it unless you grew up in that time. But V was the show where you had a race of aliens coming to Earth. They're, they look like humans. They're all friendly. They want to help us with our technology. But it turns out that beneath the human skin, they're actually reptiles. And these are reptiles that 
want to basically capture humans, eat them, take all of our minerals, our reservoirs, suck our planet dry, and you have a human resistance that tries to fight back against them. And basically, the whole TV show was an allegory for the Nazis taking over Germany during the course of World War II. Um, and it became so popular because it had some Star Wars type of effects. Uh, there was a toy line that was planned for that. The only thing we ever got was a 12-inch doll, which I do have. But the figures were going to be the size of the Batman toys, and they hadn't really seen the light of day until a catalog was released somewhere online uh, from an LJN Toy Fair magazine. And there were a few figures that I recognized right away based on the characters from the TV show. And sadly, we never got them because the show had been canceled. Uh, by the time the figures were set to come out. Uh, but apparently, I've seen on eBay quite a few times where some of those figures have actually surfaced in prototype form. And they do need assembling. They do need some painting. I haven't been able to obtain them yet, but I'd hope to do so soon. And one of the things I would love to do with this podcast, if it ever gets really popular, is to interview people from LJN, as well as other toy companies like Kenner and Hasbro, uh, Mattel to get their insight on some of these toys and find out what we were supposed to get um, as well as what were the ideas behind those designs and just in general like what it was like to make those figures and the reaction to them so that's something I'd like to get into in the future and if I can find those toys anybody that's listening and might be interested in helping me out in my little journey to find those figures that would be great um but those would be the two lines that are the most sought after for me personally. I would mention maybe the 1985 Star Wars Power of the Force figures, although I have some of them already. And you know, looking back at them, I don't know if they're really necessary to get for me at this point. Um, and there's a few others I have to think of that come to mind, but they'll come about, I guess, as we continue to do this show. Question number five. Will toys like Thundercats, Silverhawks, Voltron, He-Man, and others get an episode? So let me address this also right away, because this is a toy podcast, but we're specifically talking about toys based on live-action films. And as I said before, live-action movies eventually adapted to cartoons that would become action figures. So while we may once in a while dance into the Thundercats and Silverhawks and all the others, they're not going to be heavily discussed on this show because unfortunately they were not based on any films, nor did they have film adaptations. Now, Thundercats we know is going to have a film. Well, at least there's been talk of a movie, but it hasn't happened yet. Um, Silverhawks might get rebooted somewhere down the line. It would not surprise me. Voltron, there's been talk of a movie for years. I know there's a new show right now on Netflix, um, which I think is already in its last season, for what I understand. But, um, you know, that's another one. He-Man, there was a live-action film based on the toy line, and we will in the future discuss the new He-Man action figures that are coming out that are strictly based on that film with Dolph Lundgren and Frank Langella. And I, they look pretty damn cool. And to have the power of Frank Langella in your hands is an even amazing, more amazing feeling. Um, so that will get talked about down the line. But in general, uh, a lot of those toy lines, which I did collect and I love, um, they're just not worth the discussion if they weren't based on specific films. And I've leave that to other podcasts and Netflix shows like The Toys That Made Us um, to really get into more depth with those figures than what we would do. Um, you know, I specifically did this show not just because I'm a toy collector, more so back then than I am today, but because I'm a filmmaker. And had it not been for those toys and playing with them as a kid, I probably wouldn't be doing the films that I do today. So, you know, unfortunately, they're not going to be discussed heavily. But like I said, we would never rule them out. And if there are film adaptations of them, they're certainly going to be discussed at some point in the future, but just not right at the moment. And 
Last question, number six. When will there be a Star Wars episode? Now, I know that's probably the biggest elephant in the room in doing a podcast about movie licensed toys. And, you know, no show is ever complete without talking about the Kenner and Hasbro Star Wars figures. Um, so that's going to be saved as a special when Episode Nine gets released in December. I don't have an exact date for when they're going to come out, but th it is going to be discussed. I think just like with Ghostbusters and potentially with Ninja Turtles at a certain point, it's going to be a roundtable discussion with anybody that ever collected the Star Wars figures or happens to be a big fan of them. Um, I know for a fact that I was a huge fan because of uh, my former neighbor who collected the figures before I did, who was big into the films, and then I pretty much that interest rubbed off on me as a young kid. And, um, you know, it, it's going to be something worthwhile. But not only that, uh, it's going to have to be potentially a two-part or a three-part episode because there'll be so much to discuss between the original trilogy, the prequels, and, of course, the current films in the saga series as well as the anthology series. Um I don't know how heavily I'll get into the prequels and the current films because there was a point, particularly with episode nine, where I stopped collecting them. And there are reasons for that, but I'm not going to get into them today. Some of it should be pretty obvious to anybody who knows me personally or is well aware of the issues that the franchise took in the later years. Um, but we will be discussing it down the line, and I promise you it's going to be worthwhile because we're going to get into a lot of heavy topics about this one, and I think we could have some heated debates about these movies and the toys that came with them. Um, so, yeah, Star Wars will happen, but we're savoring that. And in the meantime, we're going to continue to discuss, you know, mostly other toy lines that are famous as well as infamous. So to expect in the near future, uh, the next episode we're definitely doing is going to be on the Jurassic Park action figures. We're going to discuss all three movies as well as uh, the figures for Jurassic World and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Um, and that will probably be with myself and Marcos and I'm hoping to get Charlie back because we're all Jurassic Park fans. We've all collected the figures. Uh, soon after that, we'll do RoboCop, and I'm hoping to do Indiana Jones down the line. I don't know who will be in those episodes yet, but those those will be discussed. And there are going to be some others. Uh, you know, with Cobra Kai coming out, there is going to be a Karate Kid episode, so we're going to talk about the Karate Kid action figures from Remco back from uh, 1986, which coincided with the release of Karate Kid Part 2. We're going to do, um, at some point this year, we're going to do Police Academy. There's a documentary coming out about the Police Academy films and the animated series and the live action TV show. So we're going to talk about the Kenner toys that coincided with the animated series. So that'll be a lot like the Ghostbusters one. Um... And just in general, there'll also be a Marvel one, um, but that will be probably a general discussion on some of the Marvel movie action figures from Toy Biz, from Hasbro, and probably things like Hot Toys and you know some of the others. We'll also do. Uh, there's going to be some specials where we're not just going to focus on one toy line. We're going to focus on the body of work of a particular director or a particular actor. And even if those films were not successful, we're still going to talk about the toys that they were tied with. So, for example, there will be one on all Arnold Schwarzenegger movie toys. We're not going to talk about Terminator. We're going to keep that for a separate uh, episode. But expect us in the Schwarzenegger episode to talk about Last Action Hero, Commando, and I can't go without talking about the Turbo Man figure from Jingle All the Way. And there will also be another one on all things Steven Spielberg. So there will be discussions in that one episode about E.T., um, films that he produced like Gremlins, Back to the Future, Small Soldiers, um, films he directed like Jaws and Hook, 
so that will be its own discussion. Aliens will be discussed along with Predator, because I feel like the two go hand in hand. Uh, and Charlie will definitely be part of that if he's available. And there will be a Disney episode. So that will be a, um, a discussion on toy lines based on animated Disney films, live action Disney films, um, basically anything that's Disney branded. And that includes Who Framed Roger Rabbit, because I know I collected those as a kid. And the same will also go for the Aladdin toys that were made by Mattel back when the original Aladdin came out. That could even coincide with the release of the live action movie, which uh, I'm not too thrilled about. But hey, it's probably going to make money anyway, so who am I to judge? And maybe we can even tie it in with the live action Lion King movie, if you want to call it live action. It's really more CG. And there's a bunch of other topics, but we'll surprise you with those down the line. So uh, that's basically all I got to say about that. Um, so, you know, we're going to do this Q&A again. Hopefully we'll get definitely get some real questions next time. I'm just basically uh, getting a little insane having to, you know, come up with my own. But like I said, some of these uh, concerns have come up as we've done this so far. But I've been having fun. It's really exciting. I do enjoy the feedback that we're receiving. And I'm hoping we can continue to grow with this. And uh bring in some more of my pals, bring in some experts, bring in people that collected these figures, shared our memories, um, and even our stories of even hunting for these toys, because I think those tales are just as important as actually having those figures in our possession and playing with them at home. So that's about it for me, guys. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, and you can follow us on Twitter at SilverScreenAF1. And if you want to email us with comments, suggestions, ideas for future episodes, or even if you want to ever submit questions for a future Q&A episode, contact us on Facebook, or you can email us at silverscreenafpodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget, for my film work, that you could also check out my stuff on Vimeo On Demand, on Amazon, and also you could follow my updates on all my film projects at ajepyxproductions.com. So that's this first edition of our Q&A session for the Silver Screen Action Figure Podcast. This is Andre Joseph. See you at the movies.